Bright Rock believes that with every change in life comes opportunity. The World Economic Forum puts change, its challenges and its opportunities on a global stage. This World Economic Forum special edition Biz News podcast is illuminated by Bright Rock, the first ever needs to match life insurance that changes as your life changes. Well, Mike, we've uh, had our A Plus show going for five episodes and now we're on location. Yes. Welcome to Davos, Switzerland. Indeed, at uh, the World Economic Forum. We've actually hijacked, I suppose you could say, one of the rooms. We haven't officially booked yet, but then we wouldn't really be coming into the Congress Center here in jeans. Well, not no, not for the rest of the week. Yeah, this is the day before it all kicks off, so we do look slightly um, more informal, but it's the day, the day before it all starts. We just wanted to come have a look at the, the center. Alec is a veteran, 17-time veteran. I am on numero uno so this is all very new to me so far? Um, completely overwhelming um i've never seen so many mercedes benzes and teslas in my life yet and we'll wait for it, tonight. it gets it worse starts tonight tomorrow those those roads are going to be chock-a-block with those uh, top end limos it's incredible i i walk to my accommodation uh, each morning and each evening and I do so purposefully, in a sense, just to soak the place up, just to all the shops that have been converted into advertisements, billboards for all the companies that are aligned with the World, World Economic Forum and how normal shops are just converted into for one week. This is the place where a particular company, we've seen so many of them, uh, that's where they're going to house their exhibitions from. And this is the very first time that I've made it into the, the Congress, ex- well, what, what do you call this? Congress just, Center. Just Congress Center. And it is huge. It is professional, as you would expect. And it is crawling with people. But I'm guessing it's nothing like what tomorrow is going to be. Yeah, indeed. Uh, it is. We're very privileged, uh, Michael and I, because we are staying with locals. Who, who are you staying with? I'm staying with a gentleman called Stefan Feist. He is a engineer, circuitry engineer of sorts, and he has two jobs. He is a fireman. So that's part of his, I suppose, his community service that he has to do. And he works two jobs and he rents a very lovely place that overlooks about three different ski slopes. And uh, he told me what his rent is. You don't want to know. <laughs> it is horrendous, but what a location. But uh- the rent that we're paying is a fraction of what you have to pay in hotels and uh, and elsewhere bnbs it, it just gets crazy at this this week just this week of the year i'm staying with uh, a lady called barbara gasler she's the editor of the davos Zeitung, which i guess if you understand it means the newspaper yeah, yeah the newspaper and uh it she's we met her a few years ago, uh, Gareth on sale when, when he was with B- uh, Biz News back then. And Linda, our colleague, stayed with her the last time they had doubles. And uh, this year I'm with her as well. Uh, and it is, and I've stayed with her once before. So it's just lovely to have some local feel because you get a better insight into how the divorces feel about the WEF. Barbara tells me that they're quite happy the WEF is back. They've is that a, the collective noun or, or what do you, the divorces? Divorce, yeah. Divorces. In Aina Davosa. Okay. I guess something along those lines. <laughs> but but she, she was saying that in the past, Mike, the, there was a, a kind of a 50-50. Mm. Some of the people in Davos uh, didn't like the World Economic Forum being here. They, they hate the, the way that their little town gets changed during this week. It's usually the first, uh, the last week of January this year. It was scheduled for the last week of January, and then because of the Omicron um, breakout, they postponed it to now. And I think certainly the World Economic Forum seem to be very delighted that they're having this event anyway, mm. given the number of postponements that they've had to go through with the pandemic in the past couple of years. But three years ago, it was a con- continuous, they had one after 9-11 uh, in New York. In solidarity with the people of New York, they moved the World Economic Forum there. But apart from that, since 1971, it's been here every year. And this Congress Center that you see, uh, as well as the six five-star hotels that exist Mm. in this little town, are all 
a result of the World Economic Forum. But what Barbara was telling us was that uh, the locals have noticed because of the lack of the income that is generated for them during this week, that it's actually quite nice to have the forum in town. Mm. And uh, they they all earn a little bit of extra rental or uh, there's the, the shopkeepers rent out their shops uh, to the big names around the world. And, and there was the, uh, there's, there's one limousine or, or chauffeur uh, company called Top Link, Alliance. Top Alliance, that's it, who, uh, who rent out a high street area for the whole year and they use it for one week. Literally. One week. So they generate all the income they need from one week. Incredible. That's incredible. I used to stay with a hotelier and uh, he, they've sold the hotel now, he and his ex-wife. And he said to me the Belvedere Hotel, which is, which is kind of the old, the old uh, uh, dowager queen of Davos, five-star hotel, been there many years. They generated 80% of their total income during this one week. That's incredible. Total annual income, yes, yeah. So Mike, uh, we've been walking around. Uh, a little bit and and seeing interesting things. As yeah, you got to point the thing at your yeah at the thing that makes noise. Otherwise, I'm going to get I'm going to get uh, uh, Ross and Nadia jumping <laughs> on my head next time. Uh, we've been we've been walking around. For me, uh, it it's interesting to see the changes from yes, past years. Yeah, but, but tell us tell us what about you, the changes. Yeah, oh, well, the change this time around, the Saudis are, are, are power. Uh, they're everywhere. Uh, the Indians. Indians, yeah. Not just. India as a state, but the, the individual states as well. Quite a lot in blockchain yes. and, uh, and crypto. And big surprise for me was to see Namibia taking a, a, yes. a very prominent position on the high street. Yes, the house of Namibia. We stopped in there briefly yesterday and it was about 90 degrees centigrade in there. They pushed up the heat so much. Maybe they're not used to this kind of temperature, which is actually quite lovely. Yeah. Um, so it's, it was a bit of a sauna in the house of Namibia yesterday, but yesterday things hadn't yet hadn't yet kicked off. I think today, um, six o'clock this evening, there's going to be a welcoming event for the journalists. We're told that there are some Ukrainian uh, members of parliament who are going to be addressing the media. They're a very informal thing just to welcome the media to Davos. Um, but Alec, the the way that that shops are transformed and uh, South Africans. Um, we haven't yet seen anything with uh, our flag or bearing our flag on it. Is that changed over the years? Yeah, this is probably the lowest key that I've ever seen South Africa at Davos. The president isn't coming. He always used to come. Even in Zuma's years, Zuma was here. Uh, the finance minister, in the absence of the president, would be leading the delegation. This year, there's no finance minister from South Africa uh, we understand that there are only two cabinet ministers that are coming. And I can tell you that is very, very surprising. Mm. Perhaps there's a conflicting event. Perhaps they, because it has moved out to May. And you can appreciate, you know, these guys' diaries have been filled uh, for some time into the future. But low-key South Africa, and <laughs> it's even worse when you see the Namibians who are really giving it horns this time round. Yeah. Uh, the other thing that was interesting, we popped in, or walked past last night, was the old Russia House. Now, that's been an institution here for... Just explain what, Rush, what Russia House is. Well, what happens, uh, it, it's actually quite funny, because ABSA, at one stage, was going to go big here in Davos, and they hired, it was only for a single year, Maria Ramos's last year, they hired a, a big shop front uh, in, the, in the high street. And you pay lots of money. You pay a whole year's rent just for the one week. It was well branded for ABSA. It was actually quite nice to be walking down the high street and you saw a South African present. But that disappeared. Maria was expecting it to be there for many years into the future. That's what they try to do, the, the various companies. Uh, Meta, for instance, the old Facebook. Yeah, they've got a spot. Uh, just opposite the Congress Center, Microsoft have got, uh, Soft has got a spot. Ernst & Young have got a spot. PwC where you know year after year you can go and there they are. Yeah. Well, this time round, Russia House has been converted, and Russia Russia House was where the Russians were for many, many years. That's been converted now into not Russia House. Yeah. And it's been taken over by it so it has been created into a 
a it's it's plastered wall to wall with um, photos and uh, sort of um, dates, and it is has been rebranded to Russian War Crimes House, and it's obviously being run by by the Ukrainians, and it's sort of a memento. It commemorates the ongoing war at the moment. It points out where all the uh, allegations of war crimes are. So you have places like Buka and it, it points to it on a map and it shows you how many civilians have been documented to have been murdered or killed there. And I'm yet, I mean, we, we, we walked past it yesterday. We weren't able to go in. It was still closed, but that's one of the locations. Um, I'll definitely be looking to, there will be a talk there, I think, um, either on Monday or on Tuesday that I'll be looking to to attend to see exactly what this this Russian war crimes house is. But that's, it's, they're able to have that space and use it for that purpose because, of course, Russia has been blacklisted. And they, it's absent. It's not here. Nobody yes. from Russia. Nobody from Russia. Uh, and none of their there. delegates, none of their business delegation, they have been, been kept out purposefully by, by where. You are still tuned in to the World Economic Forum Special Edition Biz News Podcast, illuminated by Brightrock. The first ever needs match life insurance that changes as your life changes. So those are kind of the major themes. I, I'm very keen to get uh, more involved in understanding crypto, understanding uh, digital currencies. I do have some incredible interviews lined up with people. I tried today to get an interview with the co-founder of Palantir, mm -hmm. which is the, one of the a very controversial data company, but uh, they... They are suddenly coming now into uh, prominence and being supported because the work Palantir does helps ag uh, fight aggressors in wars. And clearly they must be doing a lot in Ukraine. They are saying a lot about it. But what they do is they work with governments and then pull in data and help the governments to get the miscreants out the way. Of course, uh, people who are um, aggressive on privacy don't like what Palantir does. Palantir reckons that the, their work is to protect people's privacy rather than uh, to distribute and share it. So it's so complex. The world is complex. And I think that's the one thing here, Mike, about the World Economic Forum that, that I always find amazing is you realize how little you know. Mm. Uh, we can read, we can get some insights, we can think that we understand a topic or, uh, uh, or, or have all sides of a story. But it's like many layers of the onion are peeled off when you have the privilege of sitting here for the next few days, as we're going to be doing, and just absorbing and just getting in uh, without prejudging, without making assumptions. And that's really what this is about. It's a super, super networking event. And the reason why people come from all over the world to attend this is because they get to listen to the best in the field from anywhere on earth it's not what these garbage uh, producers say about uh, this place as, as a you know uh, professor klaus schwab is dr evil and he's trying to change the world i mean he's just a he's, an, he's a he's definitely a polymath uh, he's got i think doctorates in a, a, a couple of different uh, topics he's incredibly smart but his job is as a super networker. That's what I've seen, and I've been coming here many times. Uh, he brings people together. Mm. And by bringing people together, they share ideas. And the interesting thing, and you'll see this, is it's from across the spectrum. So you'll get, you'll get people who are obviously political left and right. You'll get countries that are developing and developed. You're, you're the one year Asa Yarafat and Benjamin Netanyahu were both here at the same time. Perhaps they met in private rooms. It is a place a neutral venue, mm. very well protected, lots of police, guards, security, where you can get together and have a conversation. And my goodness, isn't it better to be, you know, jaw jawing than war warring, as we're seeing right now in Ukraine? Mm. Yeah, I um, the only uh, interview I have confirmed at the moment, Alec, that uh, hopefully I'll be able to bring you um, more on is a an interview with the founder and the chairman of Davos. Alzheimer's collaborative. And as you're saying, you're bringing people together here. The idea is to collaborate, to share information, to share ideas, uh, and to 
figure out what is best practice. And the DAC, the Davos Alzheimer's Collaborative, um, his name uh, escapes me now, but he's the, the chairman. He's going to be discussing um, clinical trials and research that's going to be done by the DAC uh, in East Africa and other places around the world. But it's so to, to, to inject a bit of equality into the research and the trials that are run regarding uh, the disease Alzheimer's um, because about 90% of the research is done on uh, Western Europeans and the rest of the world has been left out of research and the data on Alzheimer's as a disease um, so that's going to be a fascinating. Oh, and it is the next pandemic. Yes. Mental um, health. By 2050, they estimate 100, 150 million people, which with caregivers, with family members, it's 500 million people that are going to be affected by Alzheimer's. So I look forward to being a sponge and just soaking up a lot of information. Um, it's not generally, it's in the healthcare sector. It's not something I've looked at in the past. I'm just going to be a sponge. And that's what it's about, Mark, is, yeah. is, is we learn here. We come here, we learn, we meet people that we would ordinarily not uh, ever uh, rub shoulders with. Yeah. I, I've, I've been in sessions with the curator of the British Museum. And wow, in that one hour, I learned much more about how to approach history than any books could have taught me and so on. Uh, the, the South African, direct South African interest here this year is, is limited. We were talking a moment ago, but what is uh, interesting is that a South African is head of the divorce media team, which is a, a very important job. Trevor Chow, uh, Chow is it? Chu? Chu. Oh, Trevor Chu. Anyway, he's a South African. He's worked on the media team behind the scenes for a long time. Now he's right up front and uh, he's, he's a leader of it, which is pretty cool to see that uh, one of our countrymen has got such a big job. Uh, he'll make sure that uh, we'll be kept informed on anything relating to our country. But basically, what we're looking to do is to see what's happening in the rest of the world. How does it relate to our own country? And how can we learn from these trends, these developments, so that we can best prepare our tribe, our business community, for what's just around the corner? And my goodness, there is so much to learn about given the state of the world right now. Alec, what can the community look forward to coming from us throughout the rest of the week? It's it's Sunday. The World Economic Forum kicks you off. You look at your watch. <laughs> uh, kicks off in earnest from tomorrow onwards. Um, are we expecting to bring them an update every evening at a particular time? Yeah, uh, and, and things are hectic. So you'll yeah. be watching, looking at your watch every time, I think, that we're in this room. Uh, we will give you a... On location, A plus show. That's that's kind of one of the things. At the end of the day, Mike and I will get together and have a chat like this and then bring you up to date on it. Through the week, we will be doing interviews separately, maybe together, um, with interesting people. Yeah. And we'll, we'll sit them down. Some of the interviews will be audio. Some of them will be where we can, a uh, video like this one, and really share with you not these short little sound bites where you stick the microphone in somebody's face, but much more long form. You can understand it because that's the power of this place. It's not, it's not headlines, but it's actually substantive. And I'm looking forward to us being able to share a lot of it with you. So, yes, there will be uh, the, the, the major day-to-day -day news. We'll cover that as we talk, when mm. we talk every evening in the A-plus show. Mike will tell you what he was up to in the day. I'll tell you what I was up to. And uh, I can assure you that we'll both be watching, our, looking at our watches to make sure what day it is. Because the one thing about this place, and I'm glad we both had a good night's sleep last night, mm. is that you don't get a heck of a lot of sleep hereafter. And we're not party animals. It just is that busy and that interesting. So one of the events I'm going to is with the CEO of YouTube, for instance. I mean, wow, what, a, what an opportunity to to hear from why YouTube did the censorship that they did, uh, where they're going in the future. It is so huge uh, and such an important part of the world. How do they see the world? How does Meta, the old Facebook, see the world? How does Tether, uh, the, the um, stable coin that, that went through a really wobbly patch, 
How do they view the world? We'll see uh, from that, it just gives us all a far better understanding. And by the end of this, I always feel like it's, a, it's an injection of distilled wisdom, and it takes me literally weeks to unpack it all and to kind of get uh, what they were saying. So that's, that's really the, the intention this time. We will listen, we will learn, we will find uh, so much that, that we can absorb and then, of course, share with our community. That's kind of where I would see it. How, how would you see it? The privilege is that we do not have to give people the news in a minute 30, which your traditional broadcasters, if you're putting a news package together, the most you have two minutes, a producer will let you push it to two and a half minutes, three minutes for a big story. You have the world's newsmakers uh, here. You have the smartest people in the world gathered here. And to be able to give proper, thorough um, interviews that don't just scratch the surface, uh, that's what I look forward to. It's just scratching a little bit behind those headline stories to see what we can bring you. And it's not always the people you see it on Time Magazine. There's a special Time Magazine insert that's here for the World Economic Forum. But it's some of the lesser known names that are just incredibly gifted, smart people being able to pull them aside and do an interview with them. I look forward to finding little hidden gems. So don't, uh, don't miss us. We'll be with these on location A plus shows uh, through the week from Davos. Uh, very different to all the other Davos I've been to because it's in May and you can walk in. Oh, uh, Alec, okay, how, nice fellies, that, eh? yeah. how nice is oh. that? How nice is that? Well, my fellies this time, and they, they're amazing, these fellies, because you can walk on the ice with your fellies. And you must know how comfy they are this time around. So thanks to Greg Beadle for actually bringing the right size to me this year. Uh, and I don't, I'm not slipping and sliding and putting my back. I put my back out one year here. Can you believe it? I took a slip and it was, I had to go to the chiropractor. They have everything here. But go to the chiropractor to get the back back into shape. It was terrible. Jeez. So I know people who've broken bones and, yeah. you know, slipping. It's for us South Africans, we just don't know this weather. Uh, I'm now it's so like our kind of weather. Thankful <laughs> that it is in May, and we had a little sprinkle of shower, a little sprinkle this 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 morning. Uh, luckily, we were inside having breakfast, but otherwise the weather has been incredible. I went for a ten-kilometer run yesterday. No better way to acclimatize to a country than to just go and run. And my goodness, I don't think I've been on a more beautiful run in my life. It is insane. Thanks for tuning in to this World Economic Forum special edition Biz News podcast illuminated by Brightrock, the first ever needs to match life insurance that changes as your life changes.